Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, happy Easter, everybody. The Lord is risen. This is the greatest day of the year. Our whole lives are changed because of the events that took place on this day. Well, there are so many things to talk about, but I want to focus today on a woman who was there when Jesus uh, rose just after, and she has an encounter with Jesus. And this speaks to me about where we are and about how we can encounter Jesus on this Easter day. I'm going to read from John's Gospel. We're going to pick the story up from when, right at the very beginning, when they first discover that Jesus is gone. John chapter 20, and says this. Early on, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they've laid him. And then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. Verse 11 says, But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to a woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? whom you're looking for. Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. And she told him that he had seen uh, these things to, the, to her, said these things to her. Father, we just ask right now in Jesus' name that as we unfold this, that you would speak to all of our hearts on this Easter day. Well, this is a fantastic passage of scripture. The last people to be with Jesus when he died were, were women, were women. They were joined by John, but it was women. And now who discovers that Jesus has written according to John is a woman. Many scholars suggest that this tells us that this is evidence of the very veracity of the fact that this occurred because women in that time and in their culture were seen to be unreliable witnesses. It almost in our day and age seems crazy to say that out loud, but in their culture, they were seen to be unreliable witnesses. So the, the, men, the men in Luke's gospel, when Luke tells the story, uh, they basically say when the women say that he's risen, the men accuse it, the women of it just being an idle tale. Uh, and so yet, but yet it's the women who first believe. Pope Francis, in, in a, a couple of years ago, he said that the apostles and disciples find it harder to believe in the risen Christ, but not the women, however. Uh, who was Mary Magdalene? Uh, what was her occupation? What was she like? Well, most people would say to you that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. But if you read the scriptures, it doesn't say that anywhere. It says of Mary Magdalene in the scriptures that she was that Jesus cast out seven, seven demons from her. It was St. Gregory the Great in the sixth century who labelled her a prostitute. And from then it, it has travelled on. 
But if we look at the scriptures, we can't find evidence that she was. Well, whatever her past wrongs and her weaknesses was, she was a close follower. She was a disciple of Jesus. And according to John, she comes to the tomb early and she sees that the stone, the covering for the tomb has been rolled away. The tomb is now open. And she races to tell Peter and the other disciple. Now, who's the other disciple? It's suggested that the other disciple is John. But we don't read that here, but it says that the other disciple. And, and, and they come and they uh, race there. The other disciple gets there first, then Peter. The other disciple stops at the door at the entrance of the tomb, but Peter goes right in. And, then, and, and, they, and they are astounded by the fact that Jesus' body is missing. And then in verse 10, there's, a, there's an interesting verse. It says, then the disciples returned to their homes. Why is that interesting? It's interesting for this reason, because Mary Magdalene didn't. Mary Magdalene stayed. But the two disciples, the two apostles, they went, well, they went home. Mary remains, and what does she do? She weeps. Uh, she doesn't leave. She stays there. Imagine the mental gymnastics going through her mind. Dead, alive, gone, taken. What does this mean? And she stoops to look in again into the tomb. And this time she sees two angels. And they say to her, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. They've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. She's filled with panic. She, is, she doesn't understand. She's wondering what has occurred. And turning, she sees a man behind her, but she doesn't recognise him. It's Jesus, but she doesn't recognise him. Maybe she didn't recognise him because there's light behind him and he's, he, he's got the standing in the dark and, there's light, and she can't make out his face. Maybe she doesn't recognise him because his risen body is somewhat different. And then, and then Jesus says to her, uh, Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? as if Jesus didn't know. And Jesus asked her a question that he knows the answer to, but he still asks anyway. And, and Jesus allows us to discover him in our lives. See, that's what Jesus does. Jesus is always allowing us to discover him, to encounter him in our lives all the time. Read the lives of the saints and the many of the holy men and women of history. And we're always discovering Jesus in new ways in our life. And in my own life, I can think back to when I was younger, my understanding of who Jesus was and how Jesus was in my life and how I talked to Jesus, how I prayed to Jesus has become very, become very different to who I am now. That through my life, through the experiences I've had and through the time I've walked with God and, and, and being able to see things and as I've changed and as I've understand more, you keep, I keep discovering more and more about who Jesus is that there's, that there's this ever-increasing depth. And so Jesus allows Mary to discover her more. Uh, it, you know, he, and, he re, and he respects our, our freedom in discovering him. And in verse 15, it says this, And Jesus said to him, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I'll take him away. You can almost hear the pleading in her. Listen, this, this man was important to me. This man was, was special to me. Would you, show me where you put him. Tell me where he is. Give him to me. And, 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 I, will go and I will go and I will look after him. Um, and then we read in the Scriptures, we read one of the most tender exchanges in all of the Scriptures that there is. And, 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 and it just is two words that are said, and it's this. In verse 16, and Jesus said to her, Mary. He'd been talking to her up to now, but she hadn't recognised him. But as soon as he says her name, she turned and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, she said, which means teacher. She turns to him and says, teacher. He says to her, Mary, immediately she recognises him. And she turns and she says to him instinctively almost, teacher. Uh, Panicked, frightened, maybe unbelieving, unable to comprehend. One word settles her. Mary. Her name settles her. Over the weekend, I was recently at a church uh, speaking. 
And as I was speaking with people, a number of people came to me and as I walked around, just stopped me in various places in the church or out and outside and they asked if I would pray for them. And, and a number of them immediately, they came to me, they, they started crying immediately, immediately, as soon as they spoke to me. And, 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 and I prayed that they would just, when they told me, I asked their names and, and they told me their name and then I would and just prayed for them. And, and, and I prayed a number of times that God would release an unreasonable sense of peace beyond their circumstance. I met a lady yesterday who, who uh, four weeks ago had had to come to the church because of something that her children were doing. And she started by saying to me, I don't go to church. I haven't been for many, a long time. But a few weeks ago, for the very first day, they introduced you and said you were speaking there. And she said, I've come every time every, for the last month to listen to you. And then as she said that, she started crying immediately. And, and she started crying immediately. And, 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 and I just stood with her. And then she said to me, would you pray for this? And she asked me to pray for something. I put my heart, arm around her and, and, and I just said to the Lord, Lord, would you just bring peace now? Would you just bring a peace here? Because this poor lady, was, she, she was going through some stuff, you know? And, here's, and here, is, here is Jesus, and he says to Mary, Mary, and immediately she's settled. And, 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 and when we come into contact with God, when we come into contact with Jesus, when Jesus comes into our life, you know, and we experience him, he brings with us a sense of peace that settles us. And the resurrection in so many different ways is meant to come into our life and to settle us. That Jesus is victor. That the issues that we've got, the problems we've got, the struggles that we've got, the things that we have in our life, Jesus is Lord of everything. And Jesus is the overcomer of everything. And what's his promise? His promise is this, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you in everything you're going through. You are not alone. You are not alone. Now, we know that where does Jesus end up going? Where does Jesus end up going? He ultimately will ascend to the Father. And what does he do? He takes up the place at the right hand of the Father. And then the Scriptures tell us he intercedes. He keeps talking to the Father about us. He keeps telling the Father. He keeps saying to the Father, look at that person. Look at that person. Look at what they're going through. Look at who they are. Wow, what a wonderful person. They're going through a hard time right now. The whole time he's interceding on our behalf for us interceding on our behalf. And so here is Mary disturbed and Mary recognises him in an instant. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him, teacher, uh, she knows the sound of his voice. And he speaks her, when he speaks her name, previously he'd talked to her, but you know, who are you looking for? Why are you weeping? But it was her name. It was her, it was Jesus seeing her and her realising she's seen that she settles. Something happens in that exchange right there. And it would have been unforgettable, uh, the sound of his voice at that point in time. Uh, a baby cries, you know, and a, and a mother and a father, they know the sound of their child in time, don't they? I've been with my, I, 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 I was always fascinated with that with Rosemary. We had five children and Rosemary could hear our children in the distance. And I watch my, 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 my own children with their own children, our grandchildren, and, and sometimes there'll be other kids around and they'll be able to hear the noise and the sound of their child in the midst of other children. And you, she probably would have relayed this story for the rest of her life. He turned to me and he said, Mary. And as soon as he said, Mary, I knew that I was, I knew who it was. She probably remembered that forever. He spoke to me. He spoke my name to me. Um, some people go to church out of obligation their whole life. They go their whole life. But they don't experience when they're sitting in the church, Jesus uttering their name. That as they sit there in the church, 
And, and yet Jesus wants us to know his name, that he speaks our name, that he's inviting us to relationship. It's, it's not until Jesus says her name that she recognises him. And, and here it is, the voice that welcomed her as a friend. It's, it, it's that voice. See, learning to hear the voice of Jesus in our life, his distinct voice, his correcting voice, his loving voice, his guiding voice in us is so incredibly important. The, the, the voice of Jesus that sees us, the voice of Jesus that's not hidden, the voice of Jesus that, that, that says you're not small, that you're not insignificant, it's, the, it's that voice. It was a voice that for her, no doubt, um, she knew from having been with Jesus that probably they'd laughed over meals about things, told stories together. The voice that had taught her, that had taught everyone who listened to him. No doubt it was the voice that had spoken to the woman, the women in the last few hours as he hung on the cross. And he said to, he said to his mother of John, you know, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. It would have been the voice that cried out, I'm thirsty, right at the end. She'd have known this voice. It was, it, was, it was the voice that said right at the end as he hung on the cross, it's finished. It was that voice. Um, over time, if we will spend time in prayer, if we will cultivate a relationship in our own life of spending time with him, of listening to him, we too will learn to hear that voice in the hidden place within us in that place within us that no one can take away from us. The voice that says our name, the voice of God that speaks within us. Um, so Ignatius, Ignatius of Loyola, he says this, he said, the voice of God can be recognised because it's uplifting, it's consoling and it's encouraging. Uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola said, the voice of God we recognise because it's uplifting, it's consoling and encouraging. And in time, we can learn that voice if we would listen. You know, she then comes to Jesus and she wants to touch him. That would be such an, un, you know, uh, an understandable thing. You don't see someone from a long time. What's the first thing you want to do that someone that you love, you want to go wrap your arms around them. You want to give them a hug. You want to welcome them. You want to give them a kiss. You want to say, it's just so good to see you. But he won't let her touch, but she, he won't let her touch him. Maybe it was because, maybe it's because so, there's something different. Have a look at this in verse 17. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not uh, yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Uh, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. And she said to them uh, that he had said these things to her. It's interesting, maybe she didn't, he didn't let her touch her because there was something about his risen body that was different. Maybe, maybe it was, we don't know altogether. And then, and then he says, what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to tell the apostles that I'm about to ascend to the Father. I'm about to ascend. This woman who we know is a prostitute, turns out we haven't got evidence for that. She goes to the apostles and she becomes the apostle to the apostles announcing Jesus. Think about that. This woman becomes the apostle to the apostles. She becomes the announcer of God to them that Jesus is risen. She's the carrier of good news. She's the carrier that, that will proclaim, you know, it's, it, he, he has done what he said he was going to do. We didn't understand what he said he was going to do. He's done what he said he's going to do. Uh, Mary shows us the most powerful tool in converting the world and proclaiming Jesus. It's not knowledge of Jesus, it's experience of Jesus. It's not just knowledge that we need. Sure, you need some knowledge, of course, but you, it's the experience of Jesus. She knew what she knew. And here's the thing. Did she understand resurrection? Probably not. Did she understand that he had been dead? For sure. She wouldn't have understood it, but, we, but no one could take away from her her belief, her experience of who Jesus is. See, sometimes the world wants to convict us 
and say to us, you know, all this, this, this religious stuff is rubbish. But for those of us who've encountered the Lord, you can tell us anything you want, but you can't convince of us because we know what we know in the depths of our heart. Um, you know, it may not be logical. We may not be able to prove it to anybody. We, we may not be able to make an irrefutable argument about it, but we know what we know. The resurrection for those who know Jesus in their heart, you can't take that away from us. And the world can say to us whatever it wants, but it can't take that away from us. I know what I've experienced. And it was this conviction of the early Christians. It was this conviction of their encounter with Jesus, their encounter with seeing the risen Lord. It was this conviction that caused them to spread the gospel around the world. It was this conviction that caused them to give their very lives because they'd encountered, who Je encountered Jesus themselves. It was this conviction that caused people to leave father and mother and home in the quest to proclaim him. It was this conviction that caused them to go to other places. They had encountered the Lord. And so Easter Sunday is about us encountering Jesus. Um, and, and, and without encountering Jesus, it's just hollow knowledge. It's just hollow knowledge. Um, it makes our attendance at church empty. It makes uh, it unsatisfying, uh, unsatisfying. It makes it convictionless unless we have encountered Jesus and then it makes it fulfilling. Mary, Mary, have you heard his voice? And if today on this Easter Sunday you say, I have not heard the, heard the Lord, I have not heard God speak to me, I have not heard him say my name, I have not. Well, today is as good a day as any day. Today maybe is the best day to come to him and say to him, I want to see. I want to see who he is on this, and I want to see you, Jesus, this day. I want to hear the sound of your voice. And so today, if, if you don't know Jesus or if you've been with Jesus and you've just followed Jesus out of obligation or you were once enthusiastic and you, then you got sidetracked along the way, why don't you pray this prayer with me right now and ask Jesus to come into your life again and to come and be with you exactly where you are. Loving God, we come before you right now and Father God, you love us and you sent Jesus to save us, to be our Lord and to rise from the dead and to overcome all that we couldn't do that blocked us off from getting to you. And so Jesus, we come to you and we say to you, have our lives, be at the centre of our life, be the first in our life, be the, be the leader of our life, be the Lord of our life be the most important central part of our life. We give you our life. And may we hear your voice guiding us in the depths of our being, exactly where we are. Lord Jesus, come to us exactly where we are. Lord Jesus, come to us. May we hear your, the sound of your voice, not just with our ears, but with our heart. And when someone tries to take it away from us, they never will be able to because we will have heard you. Father, we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus because you are so abundantly good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If today you pray a prayer like that, the Lord will hear that prayer. The Lord will come to you exactly where you are if you pray a prayer like that today, ask Jesus to come and be at the centre of your heart and life. I have heard his voice. I've heard his voice. No, I haven't heard an audible voice, but I know what I know and it will never be taken away from me at all. Hey, I wanna say thank you to all of you for walking this journey with us. Thank you on this blessed day that you, know the, that you would know the Saviour. And that like Mary Magdalene, you would be able to say, I've heard him. I pray you have a blessed day and a blessed week. And you know that Jesus loves you. Hey, God bless you. See you next time. And don't forget wherever you are, God's never ever far from you.